Welcome to TacosandGeeks.com. Justin here, and today we are back with more video game reviews. And today we are going to be reviewing Kaze and the Wild Mask. As always, I give you a brief synopsis, so here you go. Go on a journey as Kaze in the 19's classic, 90s classic inspired platformer. When the Crystal Islands get cursed, Kaze needs to save her friend Hogo while facing enraged living vegetables. Find the Wild Mask to unleash the powers of the legendary guardians and master land, sky, and See, this is a complete love letter to 90s baby, uh, 90s babies, 80s babies, 70s babies, those who grew up in the 16 bit, 8 bit era and used to those platforms such as Donkey Kong Country, Super Mario, Ristar, Sonic. You have elements from these type of games in there, and it's just a wonderful experience. I do want to say this really quickly. This game was out on Steam and it's for $19.99. I purchased this for the Nintendo Switch and reviewed this on the Switch Lite and it's $30 on the Nintendo Switch. So if you're really interested in getting this game and you do have a PC and you do have Steam, I suggest to get it to Steam just to save yourself a little bit of $10 on there. So that's just a little heads up for everybody who's looking to purchase this game. I will definitely recommend it for the Steam just for $10 more. But now let's get into the gameplay. Gameplay is placed very simple. It's easy to pick up for all ages and those who are used to the old school type of platformers you have your directional pad or you can use your analog to move kaze but you also have two buttons you have your b button to jump and your y button to attack on the nintendo switch and this game actually has a lot like i said has a lot of influence from donkey kong country throughout the game you have letters that kaze has to collect and and throughout the game just similar to donkey kong country and it also can lead to bonus stages similar to donkey kong country and what these things do is that as you collect and collect all these collectibles you obviously unlock certain things for the game such as concept art videos and things like that so if you are a, a completionist this is actually going to take you time because it gets challenging and let's talk a little bit about the challenge of this game first few on um, the first world like just world is um one it's like eight levels for each world and each world, the levels get harder and harder and harder and harder. So it does amp up on the difficulty level, which I thought and I really did thought it was very, very well done. Um, I will have to say that the way the gameplay moves, it's I experienced no frame rate issues. That um, she also has more power to her, as we discussed in the synopsis. Throughout the game, there's going to be levels where you're going to have to get the wild mask, and what the wild mask does is that it enhances Kaze's abilities depending on the level design. So, for this instance, for this level right here, this is an underwater level, so she has like a fish type of mask, so she can breathe, move faster, and able to attack. Um, enemies she couldn't be able to do this without the mask because if she was just in her regular bunny form she is just going to be able to just dive once and then she's going to float back up which makes it a little bit difficult so the mask also gives a little bit more strategic elements as you're playing the game and like I said it does get challenging so I died a lot in this game not saying that it's hard but it does get to the point where you really have to feel like it gives you that 90s feel where you really have to remember your area and remember the timing timing is everything especially in this platformer so if you have good timing if you know how to strategize you're going to breeze through it but that's not to say that the bosses aren't challenging because once again they are not cuphead level challenging but challenging nonetheless graphics let's just say this it looks gorgeous from the lighting as you can see here i'm really happy that they didn't go with the 16-bit um, sprite feel it is a hd type of 16-bit sprites which makes it look more cleaner it brings out the colors it makes the world more interactive and i thought it works very very well it's beautiful looking the designs from the characters to kaze herself and just the way the lighting is but here's a little bit of the music Music for me, it's probably the weakest element of the game. It's it does its job, but I felt like the music, it's it doesn't really capture me to like, oh man, I have to go get this soundtrack. But it does enough to complement the environment, complement the game, complement the style and tone that it's going for. But for the most part, the music really didn't sell me on it. So for the final rating, I'm giving this a four out of five stars. I absolutely did love this game, minus the music. Um, this game is a complete love letter, as I said, 
to the 90s era platformers. It's challenging. It has a great character. I definitely would love to see this world again. Definitely would like to see this character again. It's a fun game with some really cool boss battles. It's lengthy, believe it or not. It's going to take you uh, probably, I'll say, at least a good eight hours. Because if you, especially if you're a completionist, because even after you beat the levels, there is a time attack mode, which as you can see right here, which is very challenging. And you're going to be on this game for a while. It's a fun game. And four stars. This is Justin from Otakosageeks.com saying don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and visit Otakosageeks.com.